Uh, hi. We're trying to get an update on the next generation of Wi-Fi, which we have labeled as Wi-Fi 8, so that we can be prepared for the evolution story of Wi-Fi, uh, which is obviously an ongoing one and keeping up with the trends in other aspects of wireless industry. My name is uh, Srikant and I'm with NanoCell Networks. So Wi-Fi 8, as we call it, started, you can say, with IEEE study groups in 2022. And some of the initial goals were to kind of see whether we could have deterministic operation in Wi-Fi networks, get gigabit throughput with some realistic, you can say, type of devices. And in general, I think apart from the throughput aspects, which is always important for Wi-Fi, latency gains prominence with the new generation applications like extended reality, etc. Also, a few more things were in the pipeline, but I would say these were some of the dominating sort of trends driving Wi-Fi 8. Also, the IEEE is cognizant of what is going on in 3GPP, which is the, you can say, cellular standard setting body, practically speaking. And they have releases in 5G, uh, leading to potentially 6G sometime close to 2030. And unlike, say, the typical 3GPP uh, way of uh, generation handling, which is uh, upgraded with releases, IEEE does not have a release structure. We have to go for new standardization, almost to keep in touch with some of the release features in 3GPP to a certain extent. Okay. So you can see how, for example, certain things happening in the 5G release timeline and how we want to be somewhere ahead of the uh, game, at least for the indoor and such low mobility use cases. Okay. And here again, you can see some of the KPIs cropping up in initial discussions. Okay. So this is important for the whole area to be in touch with uh, sort of some technology which has potential competitive flavor. I think one of the interesting trends that IEEE was looking at was to bring some of the high frequency bands, which we loosely refer to as millimeter wave, 60 gigahertz and possibly higher, into the mainstream for a variety of reasons. Because this is, uh, as you know, a good swath of spectrum, uh, potentially having future implications as we get into a lot of interesting heavy duty applications. Okay, So these were some of the initial thoughts. What has happened recently? So as of March uh, 2023 or so, of course, uh, we have been calling this new initiative as ultra high reliability wireless LAN. But more importantly, now IEEE has this name, official name, task group, IEEE BN, 802.11BN, continuing from all those alphabet extensions that you have seen over the years, okay, which we will popularly coin as Wi-Fi 8. That's what most of the time this has been doing. And as stated earlier, of course, uh, extended reality, virtual reality becomes a very important driving force. 10 gigahertz, uh, 10 gigabit throughput with uh, realistic spatial streams on the clients become important. Peer-to-peer uh, -peer, uh, also gets a lot of attention uh, because it's potentially uh, a growing area. So these are, I think, the main drivers that we'll see. But what about the spectrum? Are we getting millimeter wave in as a part of our uh, mainstream standard? The quick answer is no. So the initial foray of 802.11bn will not have the 60 gigahertz or such high spectrum bands included. So we're going to be mostly this sub seven gigahertz, which is predominantly 2.45 gigahertz and the six to seven odd gigahertz spectrum. And some of the technologies which I'm sure will be spelled out like multi-AP coordination, which they tried a little bit uh, as a part of Wi-Fi 7, 
some deterministic latency related uh, features. So I'm sure these will get a lot of uh, enhancements as we move on in this UHR Wi-Fi 8 11BN world. So what happens to this millimeter wave 4A? Is it completely dead? So let's just step back and see the story of the high frequency bands. Uh, Wi-Fi 4A into 60 gigahertz with 11AD, 11AY, Y gig, uh, for those of you who remember the branding. But unfortunately, it's not had the mainstream Wi-Fi market traction, which means it hasn't come to our, uh, you know, off the shelf access points, laptops, phones, tablets, TVs, etc. And partly that's because the Y gig or the, the whole standard ADAY standard uh, has no connection with 802.11 mainstream, that is our A, B, N, et cetera, right? So that I think is what we are trying to do because this used to be a separate chipset with no connection and ergo it has only found some niche applications like uh, backhaul for some of you might remember teragraph like initiative. However, I think the IEEE Wi-Fi community knows that 60 gigahertz is a lot of potential, especially for our sweet spot applications, indoor short range uh, with a lot of you know, potential for high throughput, low latency, et cetera, et cetera, okay? And I think cellular also eyeing some of these spectrum becomes important for IEEE and Wi-Fi to uh, sort of be wary that it should not be grabbed by cellular like what's happening to some of the six gigahertz spectrum today. So what is happening on millimeter wave? So we are not giving up on it. It's just that the mainstream 11 PN will focus on seven sub seven gigahertz, but we'll have a separate study group called as the IMMW study group, which is going to look at how to bring the millimeter wave uh, into the mainstream by basically using some kind of a scaling of the file layer, right? So instead of it being a separate different technology, it will have a lot of unification so that we can possibly see some chipsets in the future once the technology becomes mature, which will have both the seven sub seven support plus the higher band support with hopefully minimum implementation complexity enhancements uh, as well as decent costs and so on. Already in Wi-Fi 7, we are preparing the ground for these multi-link operations, which is expected to now have sub-7 plus these higher bands. So these are the, you can say, framework which has been agreed on for us to develop something so that the millimeter wave can come into the mainstream and we'll leave any fine optimizations etc to some future enhancements okay what are the timelines so today as you know we are in the world of wi-fi 7 so to speak uh, already products are out in the market but certification is due sometime this year wi-fi 8 what about it well as I said, somewhere around four, three, four years. So we are looking at something of this time scale, somewhere 26, 27. Uh, IEEE, of course, will finalize the standard roughly around that time, but usually certification precedes this. And what about the millimeter wave addition? Well, that's going to be slightly around 2028 20, or so time frame is what we think, because it's too early for us to comment on any concrete timelines, okay? So I hope that gives you an idea of what's coming ahead uh, with respect to Wi-Fi 8. For more information, please take a look at our website, NanoCell. We also offer courses through Wi-Fi Now Academy. Thank you.